All right, boys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over my recce rifle setup. Um, over the last few months to a year, we've all kind of collectively decided as a community that this is the traditional recce rifle setup. LPVO, some kind of offset or piggyback red dot. With a little longer barrel, it'll kind of reach out and extend the range of the 5.56. Quick caveat before we start. I have less than a thousand rounds through this rifle, so this is in no way going to be like an in-depth review. This is more just going to be my idea is basically on how this setup and culmination of parts is performing. I have about six, seven hundred rounds through it. There's going to be follow-up videos on this rifle, just to let you guys know. We're running my Griffin Armament M4 SD2 suppressor. This is a full-size 5.56 can. Uh, I'm kind of still testing. Like I said, I'm going back and forth between using this and my Surefire 300 SPS. This one makes the rifle a lot less front heavy and a little more maneuverable. This one offers a little bit more suppression. Maybe we'll do a comparison video uh, one day to kind of see how the signature is different between the two. But currently, uh, this is what I'm running. I had to pin and weld the Griffin Armament break. So, um, I'm close friends with my gunsmith. So, he's he's able to do that and take, him, take muzzle devices on and off. Is that legal? I will make it legal. It's all connected to a 13.7 Hansen profile barrel from Ballistic Advantage. If you haven't seen my video on my 10.3 main squeeze rifle, go check it out. I went over in depth basically why I like these barrels. Their Hansen profile is designed to uh, maintain accuracy while bridging the gap between a heavy profile and a government or pencil profile barrel. The other big selling factor to me is going to be nickel boron coated M4 feed ramps and barrel extension. Again, shooting suppressed AR-15s, you're going to be dumping a lot of carbon into your operating system, so a little extra reliability for a serious rifle, in my opinion, is worth it. One downfall with this barrel is it is a carbine length gas system on a 13.7 barrel. I understand why they did it. If you had a mid-length, it'd be way out there and you'd have not very much dwell time. Would that be remedied with a suppressor? Potentially, but then again, not everybody has suppressors, so I understand why they went with that. Uh, gas length. That being said, the gas blowback on this rifle suppressed is not too bad. It's about on par with other ARs, so just be aware if you're going to go with this barrel for your recce rifle setup. The rail itself, this is a SLR. Um, I forget the model name, but if you go to SLR's website, they literally have tons and tons of rails for pretty much every barrel length you can think of. This one is the one specific to 13.7 barrels. It ends right at the end of the barrel, as you can see, and gives that real nice monolithic look with your suppressor. I've heard some people complain that they heat up. I haven't had that issue, but then again, I, from shooting AKs, I've pretty much gotten the habit of just always wearing a glove on my offhand. No complaints with it. It's got machined in QDs here at the back on the nine and three o'clock positions. M-lock all the way around, I like that. Very comparable to a Geisley rail. One thing you will have to do is purchase their specific proprietary barrel nut wrench. That is a, that is one thing to keep in mind. I think it's like $5. So if you're already spending 300 and something dollars on your barrel, I, I don't think it's that big of an issue, but keep that in mind. Down here I'm running a BCM angled vertical grip. Uh, this allows me to get a nice C-clamp on my rifle. I kind of like the angle forward feel, basically, from after I ran my full-size AK for quite a while, I got used to the uh, shark fin I created out of the dong grip, and I just like the way it feels. It allows me to really pull the rifle into my shoulder when I'm shooting fast. Streamlight Protac HLX, if you've seen my other videos on my other rifle setups, I like Streamlight Protac. They were good, 1,000 lumens, American-made. For me, you can't beat it for the price, especially considering how much some weapon lights are going for these days. For less than 200 bucks, it comes with a mount pressure pad and a mounting solution for the pressure pad. Up here, I'm running my D-Ball A3 for night vision. Every rifle I'm gonna configure, I'm gonna configure with the idea that I want it to be a fighting rifle. So in my opinion, a fighting rifle has to, at the very least, have a sling, have a light, have an optic, and have an IR device of some kind for night vision. Currently, this is the only IR laser designator illuminator I own. Uh, I'm still kind of up in the air on which one I'm gonna get to be a designated unit to go on this rifle permanently. I'm kind of between the D-Ball D2 and the Holosun LS321G. Again, once I nail down like a more permanent solution for this rifle and I get it on here and zero it up and everything, we'll do follow-up videos, but currently that's what I'm running. But moving back from there, the upper receiver, this was, I got this as a stripped upper receiver from Thoroughbred Armament. This is a FN cage code marked upper receiver. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, I highly recommend Thoroughbred Armament. They sell tons of cool stuff, tons of surplus stuff. Inside I'm running a Aero Precision Bolt Carrier Group. You can't really tell because it's like coated in carbon right now, but um, I had it laying around from a past bill that I took apart and parted out. So I threw that in there. Aero Precision makes good parts, no problem with that. The charging handle. 
This is a Geisley Airborne charging handle. I have a Radiant Raptor on my other series rifle and I kind of wanted to try out and compare and contrast this to the Radiant Raptor. And honestly, they're both interchangeable. Uh, extended ambidextrous latches on your charging handle works great. I pretty much exclusively run my charging handle with my offhand. I'll just like grab this latch and rack it or whatever. So they're both better than a mil spec. I understand a lot of people don't want to spend a hundred plus dollars on a charging handle, especially when mil spec charging handles, you can find them some places for like $10. So as far as charging with one hand, like I just showed you, I can do it with mil spec charging handles too. It's not that big of a deal, but the rest be assured, these are both good charging handles. Um, they also make a version with a little smaller latches so they don't get caught. I haven't had any issues with these or my radians getting caught on anything, but then again, I'm not jumping out of airplanes with my rifle, so this is a low receiver, a strip low receiver I'd gotten from PSA. Uh, I'll just say it, I trust PSA. I've had no issues with their low receivers. Again, with like modern machining techniques and practices, it's pretty hard to get shit out of spec, but just be aware if you're buying cheaper, cheaper and lower receivers and components. Other than that, the lower receiver parts itself, it's all mil spec, mil spec bolt catch, mil spec selector, mil spec trigger. Um, we've gone over it before. Everybody should know at this point, you can shoot mil spec triggers fast. It's just training with them and kind of learning your trigger and it's reset. Pistol grip, I'm very partial to the Magpul M-O-E-K. I like its vertical um, angle and how thin it is. It allows me to really like wrap my hands around it. I have somewhat small hands for someone my size, so those work good for me. I like them. Um, as far as the buffer, mil spec buffer, uh, mil spec buffer spring, nothing fancy there. Magpul CTR stock. This is my first experience with one of these. Um, very comparable to a, a Satma B5. It has battery storage, which I do use. Um, if you can store extra batteries on your rifle, I think you should. So I like that. I like the cheek weld it gives me with um, its shape and everything. Works good for me. So I've been saving this till the end, my optic setup. This is, to me, the beating heart of a recce rifle, so to speak. I have here a Vortex Viper Gen 2, uh, 1 to 6. Excellent optic, um, glass quality is great. This is my first experience with like an LPVO and like a piggyback red dot and like a recce rifle. So I've always kind of been partial to re uh, red dots or holographics with magnifiers. This is, like I said, my first experience with one of these. So kind of wanted to see how it was gonna work for me before I went, you know, balls in on a $1,300, $1,400 optic. You can use this as a red dot for sure on one power. I'll say that 110% just based on how bright the illumination is on this guy. I pretty much run mine on six all the time. And for anything close, I'll I use this piggyback red dot, which we'll get into. So my mount, this is a American Defense Manufacturing Quick Detach uh, with titanium lever scope mount. This is my first experience with American Defense and uh, I really like their scope mount. This is the Delta 30 millimeter, I believe. I went with this scope mount specifically because they offer a front ring that has a little section of Picatinny, which allows you to mount a piggyback red dot. It's basically a toolless install. You can control the tension on your QDs with these little screws up here. Um, well worth the money. It is an expensive mount. It's 300 plus dollars, but well worth the money in my opinion. Awesome, awesome mount. If you guys saw my video on my Draco, this is the Sightmark M-Spec Mini. I'm unaffectionately gonna call this like the little micro red dot that could because for how much this red dot costs, it punches way above its weight class. First of all, I know some people are going to hear Sightmark and be like, oh, isn't that like a shit tier optics manufacturer? Yeah, kind of, but this red dot survived about 2,000 rounds on a Ultimac on my Draco. If you don't know anything about AKs or Ultimacs, let me just tell you that optics very, very commonly get barbecued on that setup, especially on a short AK. This optic I had where the body itself was like too hot to touch. And it never lost zero, never flickered, never died on me. So, you know what? It earned its right to uh, live on a more like serious setup. Another cool feature about this optic is it, they don't advertise it as having a night vision setting. But when you turn it down to its lowest setting, it is almost perfect for night vision. So, I'll overlay some little footage so you can kind of see what it looks like. Hold zero, I've had no issues with it. Awesome, awesome little red dot. Uh, originally, I was planning on either putting this uh, Holosun that I have um, up here. That was my, actually, that was my original idea, or that was my original plan for this rifle, but unfortunately, it is stuck on this Atero arms mount. This used to live on my AK. Um, so I Loctited it, and now I can't get it off. And one of the screws stripped, so 
Yeah, I kind of screwed myself on that one. It's stuck on this for now. But then I was like, you know what? I'll just throw this uh, Hollow Sun 407C that I have on my carry gun and I'll just replace it with an RMR or whatever. But I was like, you know what? I have that sight mark that's on my Draco. My Draco isn't really like a serious use rifle, so it can live without an optic for a while until I figure something else out. So threw that on here and it has been running perfectly. So the other interesting thing about this optic setup is uh, the height for night vision with this piggyback red dot. If you guys saw my uh, video on my other main squeeze rifle, you heard me complain about the height of a uh, lower one third optic trying to get lined up with my night vision for passive aiming. With this setup, it pretty much puts the piggyback red dot at a 193 or higher height. So that allows me to get behind this uh, red dot with my night vision comfortably. I'll also say that this setup is superior to an offset red dot. I ran an offset red dot on my one of my other rifles, kind of testing out how I liked it. It's good, um, it's definitely fast, but a little bit of practice, you can get good at picking up this dot uh, when you shoulder your rifle you know, like anything, it's gonna come down to training. The other thing that I wanna to touch on is how this setup works together. So have, if, you've, if you've ever spent any amount of time like getting behind a magnified optic and trying to pick up a target at distance, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll pick up your sight picture and then you're like, oh shit, I don't see what I'm trying to aim at. So then you'll like search around for it. And I mean, in a combat situation, obviously it's not good. It's gonna take a precious time. If you find your target with this micro red dot, put the dot on it, you drop down to your scope, it's almost always perfectly lined up. I like This setup to me is the beating heart of like this rifle and why I like it so much. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say like this is probably gonna be like my go-to um, on longer rifles like this from here on out because like it's just, it's hard to beat this setup with the piggyback red dot. The way they work together is so intuitive and it feels so good. Um, it's fast, so. Uh, with that being said, guys, that's really all I got. Um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Like and subscribe. Comment. Do all that stuff so um, the YouTube algorithm can pick up my videos and get them to the people who want to see them. So I appreciate all the support. I've received a lot of like real positive comments on some of my stuff. Thank you. It means a lot. Um, I mean, to be honest with you guys, like I, I make these videos and I run this channel not because I'm looking to be like famous in the gun world or like whatever it is but honestly i would love to do this for a job like this is what i love to do i'd love to be able to make a living just like making videos off of guns and gear and whatnot so i really appreciate it that's what i'm striving for anyways um so that's it guys i'm gonna go a long ways with me and um this is my baby girl She's a year old, a little over a year old. Uh, I also have a boy, Husky, who's uh, like seven, seven or eight. Uh, one day you'll meet him, he's, he's camera shy. <laughs>